This is the third section of the functions and graphs chapter, uh, composite functions. This should be easy because you've done this at GCSE. So you know that if you wrote uh, a function like this, g h of x, you know that what you do, you start with the one that's closest first, and then as you move away, you do that second. So basically you will start with x, um, you would put that into h, to get h of x and then you would put that into g to get g of x if you have the same function twice so if i had g g of x g g of x we can write that as g squared of x so basically you start with x you put it into g and then you put it into g again yeah, so you can put it back into the same function. That's that's pretty much what iteration is. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Should be very easy. So here we have two functions. F of X is that, G of X is that. A says, start with one, put one into G and then put it into F. So you put one into G, which says add one to it, so you get two. Then you put two into F, which says square it, so you end up with four. B, we start with three. We put three into F, which says square it, so you get nine. You put nine into G, which is going to be 9 plus 1, so that's 10. And then C, we start with negative 2. We put it into F, which says square root, so it becomes 4. And then we put it into F again, so we end up with 16. Different functions this time. Um, Right, this time we're not putting numbers in, we actually need to find algebraically what the functions are. So if you put g into f, you basically um, take the first function, g in this case, and then when you put it into the second function, basically what you do is you replace x with g. Or what the function g is so what you could say um, in general is that uh, you take the first function in case that's the one closest to x the one closest to x and substitute it into substitute it into the second function into the second function and then what you do after that um, is then simplify it that's a quick way of doing it so um, we take the first function in this case which is g and we take the f function and replace x with what g is which is that, so 3x becomes 3 lots of x squared plus 4 plus 2. We can simplify that. So we'll end up with 3x squared plus 12 plus 2. So we'll get 3x squared plus 14 for that one. Uh, for b, we'll take the second function x squared and where we've got x, we replace it with 3x plus 2, so it becomes, instead of x squared, it becomes 3x plus 2 squared, plus 4. So we'll expand the brackets, so I'll end up with 9x squared um, plus 6x plus 6x plus 4 plus 4, so that will simplify to 9x squared plus... Uh, 12x plus 4 
plus 8. And then the last one, this means, well, it's not the last one, C, we put it into F twice. So you take F and you put it into F, so it's 3 times F, which is 3x plus 2. So it's 3 times, basically like the input, plus 2. That will become 9x plus 6 plus 2, leaving us with 9x plus 8 for that one. So I'll just underline those. And the last part, this is just solving an equation. Find the values, values, so we're expecting two answers, of b such that f of fg of b equals 62. So because we've got a b in a bracket, we use the letter b in the equation, not x. Now f g of x we've worked out in part a, that's here. So instead of writing 3x squared plus 14, we write 3b squared plus 14 equals 62. So uh, first thing is to take 14 away from both sides of that. So that will give us 3b squared equals 48. Divide by 3, b squared equals 16. So here's our values of b. b is plus or minus 4. So that's the values as it was asking the question. This time, one of the functions is a modulus. We still do the same method. So uh, we're going to take the number 3 and we're going to put it into g. So that means 3 plus 1 over 2, which equals 4 over 2, which is 2. And then we put the 2 into f, which says do 2 times 2 minus 8 and find the modulus of that. So that's going to be the modulus of 4 minus 8, which is negative 4, which leaves 4 as our final answer. B solve fg of x equals x so let's work out what fg of x is so we take g and we put it into f wherever uh, x is so it's going to be two, modulus 2 x which is x plus 1 over 2 so there's the 2x minus 8 modulus of that equals x so remember when we've got this modulus we replace the modulus with brackets one with a plus sign one with a minus sign so the two things that we're going to solve are going to be uh, this 2x plus 1 over 2 minus 8 with a plus sign equals x. And the other one that we're going to solve is going to be with a minus sign 2x plus 1 over 2 minus 8 equals x. I suppose I could have simplified it first. So we'll do that now. So this will become uh, 2x plus 2 all over 2 minus 8 equals x. So that just becomes x plus 1 minus 8 equals x. And you can see from here that there is no solution. In a moment, I'll show you how we might use the graphs to help us with this. So no solution from that. And then from here, uh, we'll end up with uh, negative 2x plus 2 over 2 plus 8 equals x. So we'll end up with uh, negative 2x. Because actually all of this is going to be negative. So it's negative 2x um, minus 2 over 2 plus 8 equals x. So negative x minus 1 plus 8 equals x. Let's add x to both sides. So we get 2x uh, equals 9. So x equals 9 over 2, which is 4.5. So there's our only solution. Now, how could I have used the graph to help me do this? Right, I suppose what I would do is probably simplify the left hand side yeah and I'll do that 
up here. Right. So what I had before was um, modulus. Now the twos cancel out, so let's call that x plus one minus eight. Modulus that equals x. So that's basically x um, minus seven on that side and x. And what we draw do is we draw the graph of y equals x. We draw the graph of x y equals x minus seven. Or modulus x minus seven. And then we look at the crossing point. So if I draw the graph of y equals x, that's an easy one. That's going to be this graph here. So that's my y equals x. Now the graph of the modulus of x minus 7, that's going to be a straight line graph that crosses the axis at negative 7 and slopes upwards. So let's put a negative 7 on here. And it's the same gradient as the blue line that I've drawn. So let's do that in a different color. Now remember what happens is, remember Y can't be negative. So this bit that's down here is going to flip up and go like that. Uh, so that's the graph of Y equals modulus X minus seven. Now you can see there's one solution because the two graphs cross here. Now, where does it cross? It crosses on the reflected part. So this is the reflected part, reflected part of the Y equals X minus seven line. So if it's on the reflected part, we're really only interested in solving the equation where the x minus 7 we put a negative there equals x that's why we only got a solution over here with the negative there and this all links into transformations if you have a graph and you do the transformation uh, negative f of x then what you do is you reflect the graph in the axis here so this bit of the graph is like the line y equals x minus 7. The reflected part of the graph here is actually the same as, as the graph y equals negative x minus 7. That's why we put a negative in front of the brackets. And again, why we only got a solution over this side and not this side. So sketches can save you having to do this extra working here. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 2C on pages 34 to 35.